Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to talk about two new Sonoff products which is the POW Elite and the TH Elite and today I want to quickly talk about them and probably I'm going to follow this up with a more detailed video on each of those devices separately but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of uh, you know what these devices do and how they are different uh, from the previous POW and the P uh, previous TH models. As you can see with these new models um, Sonoff has done the same uh, layout and the same box for both of these devices. They all come on this big box. The only sort of like difference here which I omitted is uh, there is also a cover for the terminals here so uh, you won't see all these you know connections and everything but still it is uh, it looks like a very clean design and uh, I think a very good looking design although I think it is primarily designed to be like hidden in a cabinet because the way the whole box is arranged is you can still see the, all the cabling going in and out of the box you can't really hide it uh, unless you design some sort of enclosure so I don't think it is designed to be uh, uh, in this you know in the side like on the wall or mounted on a wall because you will still be able to view the cabling and this bracket which is provided for each of these are suitable to be mounted uh, you know using a screw or using on a DIN rail so again it looks like that its primary use is intended for like cabinets and um, you know control boxes or electrical cabinets but they have certainly improved on the original design definitely the additional thing we are getting for these devices is we are getting a big screen and this screen displays a different set of information depending on the device so obviously for a POW you see two different screens cycling automatically the, the first shows the voltage and the amps and the second one shows the kilowatt hours or the watts so the the consumption and at the moment I'm only driving this small indicator light which uh, consumes next to nothing so we won't be able to see any you know real value appearing here but you would use the POW just like a previous POW to switch a load where uh, of which load you want to measure the consumption of and the great thing about these is that uh, the previous models uh, I think had a 10 amp relay but now the POW Elite is available in two versions so you can either get a 16 or a 20 amp version which I think it's going to be quite useful especially for high loads so if you want to switch like a water heater or a space heater you definitely want a device which can handle the the amperage of the and probably you know with some margin and of course if you are running something off like a 16 amp breaker your switch should be at least 16 amps uh, so you know there, there is not a weak link in the uh, uh, in the circuit and for the other one for the th as i said the same layout uh, it has also a big screen at the moment it is connected to a temperature and the humidity sensor which i think it's exactly the same model as as before and now it shows the temperature and the humidity so this is a single screen it doesn't change so you can see the temperature which is 28 degrees quite warm and the temp and the relative humidity of 51 Point 0.8 degrees. The temperature and the humidity sensor obviously gets connected so there is an RJ11 connection up here and the other big thing, the other major thing which is the TH Elite is that it has the usual connection so the in you know the mains in and out just like the previous one but now we also have a connection on the top which is allows a dry contact uh, connection so if you want this TH uh, to switch your boiler which usually requires a dry contact connection you have the required connectors up here in the top so common neutrally open and neutrally closed I don't want to go into the details of what the dry contact is I mean if you uh, that's probably something that I would uh, describe in my uh, follow-up video so again you can use it to um, control or to turn off like a regular load for example again it can be a water heater or a space heater you just connect the mains in and the mains out but if you want uh, let's say to control a furnace using the th then you can use the dry contact instead which is up here so i think this is a great combination in order to be used for both of them and next i think i'm just going to uh, briefly talk about some of the differences between these units and the earlier ones 
So, I mean, I already talked about the physical differences and, you know, some of the uh, how much Ampere it can handle, but also there are some software differences. So let's look at the POW first. And here you can see the POW um, uh, screen, and it's not an awful lot different from the previous POW. Uh, you can see, you know, it has the same schedule timer and the loop timer. And if I click here, I can get, uh, you know, usage statistics and it goes back to daily, monthly, and I, also, I can also download it. So I don't think that it is uh, awfully different from the previous model. So if I go back to my all of my devices and I have, for example, further down here, POW of release 2. The screen is a slightly bit different, but you still have the consumption here. It uh, sort of shows you the same, you know, statistics. Uh, again, the screen layout is slightly different, but you can, you know, you get pretty much the same information. Maybe the history for the Elite is a slightly bit, uh, it's slightly bit more, but basically you get uh, daily consumption. That's how the, the device aggregates. So there is not an awful lot of uh, difference here and you have the same controls. So the real difference is actually on the, the settings. And uh, so here I'm just going to go into the settings of the new POW Elite and I'm going to point out the differences. So the first couple of stuff are the same. We have some threshold settings and here we have um, even the older model was able to uh, switch based on max power or minimum power so that hasn't really changed the on the previous model the um, there was only one voltage setting so that was like an over voltage setting although it was never really clear and there was also a current setting so here you are getting a separate max and a minimum voltage and also max current so i think the current is uh, somewhat it's uh, redundant because you know the the line voltage is usually the same so you can just operate using the max or the minimum power settings but again you, you you can monitor on the amps as well so if you have any loads which is consuming too much you can just cut the power maybe with a minimum voltage if you have a device which is really sensitive to voltage and for some reason if your line voltage drops you can just cut the power to it that could be a, a neat feature so it is almost the same as the previous one and then we have uh, some inching settings and here I made a separate or I will make a separate video on this how this uh, this new option here the status option which is either auto on or auto off can be used for some interesting scenarios so you can configure something to be auto off or auto on and if you configure the I mean normally you would configure auto off so let's say you enable inching 20 seconds, so you turn the device on and it automatically turns itself off. But now you can do it the other way around. So maybe you have some devices where it should be running 24 seven, but for some reason you just want to pause it for a certain amount of time. So you configure the inching with a power auto on feature. And then if you turn it off, then it's going to turn itself on. So eh, that's interesting. That can be useful. And, um, and yeah, see so the other thing is which uh, I've uh, glanced over is I don't think there was a reset uh, functionality on the previous one, but now we have a reset, so we can just reset all the consumptions. And we also have a push notification. So previously you just had a simple push notification. So you would get a notification if the device got turned on or off. But now we also have a consumption notification and you can have a notification on a monthly or a daily consumption and when that consumption is reached then you get a notification so again it could be uh, nice if you want to be mindful of how much a certain device consumes but even though um, even if you're not concerned about the usage but you know you have a device here let's say you have a pump and this pump have a tendency that it gets stuck on because let's say your float is um, it gets stuck from time to time then maybe you can get um, you know you set uh, you can set a notification on the daily consumption because you know you would expect this pump to run for a couple of hours only which uh, equals to a certain kilowatt hours of usage and if it goes above that then you know maybe there is a physical issue maybe there is a blockage maybe the uh, the um, the switch didn't trip or something like that so this could be actually quite a useful uh, piece of uh, setting that now you can have with the POW Elite. So I think these are the main differences and these are the reason you would uh, buy the Elite 
I mean, the extra functionality and maybe the look and feel that you can, you know, look at the consumption. You don't have to take out your phone. You can just look at the consumption and the kilowatt hours here. One thing I haven't really found is if I can turn off the sky cycling, because I think in some cases I'm more interested in the uh, consumption, not so much about the line voltage and the amps, but it would just keep cycling these two screens. You can't really do anything about that at the moment. So that's the POW. And for the TH, again, it's going to be fairly sim similar to the previous TH. Actually, if, if I look at the main screen, you can see that you have the option for manual or auto. You can have a button here to turn it on and off. And it shows you the temperature and the humidity, and it also generates a small graph. Uh, this unit is fairly recent, so it doesn't have an awful lot of history. And you have the schedule timer and the loop timer as well. So nothing really changed here. I mean, I think what is new is actually this graph. So if I go back to my previous one and I have, uh, I just need to find it, a, an older TH. Which is right here. So as you can see, it still shows me the temperature and the humidity. It has the auto or the manual option here, uh, but it doesn't have the, uh, the graph. So definitely the graph is something new that you are getting with the Elite. So if you are interested in how the temperature or the humidity changes, well, you have to get the Elite uh, in order to have this information here. And if I switch to auto, you can see that I can set up the old TH to turn on and off automatically based on either the temperature or based on the humidity. So I can control the humidity in a room or a temperature and that's it. And the new TH, the TH lead is uh, again somewhat similar. So we have the schedules and the timer and the loop timer. But and when I set the auto functionality, I get a similar screen where I can say whether I want to control by temperature. Let's say I want something to be turned on if the temperature goes about 30, uh, we are talking about degrees. And then if it goes below 25, oops, I want to turn it off. So you can see it here. And I can set a period for that. So maybe I only want this to run between two o'clock and three o'clock in the morning for some reason, and I save it. And I have a setting and I can create another one. So maybe in the, in the evening I want to control something by temperature and then maybe during the day I want to do it by humidity. So let's say if it goes above 80% and if it goes uh, and it turns on and if it, it turns off if it goes below uh, 50%. And maybe this is going to run between 6 o'clock and uh, I don't know, whatever, 4 p.m. So you have these options. So you can go, you know, pretty wild with all these settings, switching between different times and, you know, between temperature and humidity. And in the effective period, you can even say, you know, which day of the week. So, uh, so if you have some complex control situation or control requirements, I think these, these settings are, are quite versatile. So that would allow you to set some really complex, uh, um, scheduling here. To be honest, I don't know how many you can set these. Um, I would assume like something like a few, maybe a dozen of these settings, but uh, you know this stuff is never documented and I haven't really created more than just a few for uh, testing. So that's definitely one difference here. And the other difference what I've uh, found in the settings is you can change the temperature unit. So all the folks in the US you can change to Fahrenheit and then your display changes and also so you can see it here and actually changes here as well. So you can see on the screen it shows Fahrenheit and then once you go into the settings you can also set the you know the stuff in Fahrenheit and the and the graphs change it as well. So I think that's nice. It, I don't think it was available in the previous version or or maybe I, I think it was available in the touch uh, but sorry this is not the touch the uh, the, the touch screen, but I think for the older ones, all the TH wasn't available. And again, the other difference which I've already mentioned on the POW is this new 
auto off and auto on setting on the inching. So normally you would set up this inching to automatically turn off something, but now you can also set it up to automatically turn something on. So it turns off for some reason, or you turn it off manually, and it would automatically turn it back on. And I said that this is useful if you want to um, set up a delayed start for a particular, uh, particular device. Um, so I think these are the differences that I can see between the older TH models and the new TH Elite. And uh, these are the reasons why you would choose uh, you know, this unit over the old one. Oh, actually there is one more reason which I forgot to mention is uh, that there are a few different sensors available for the TH Elite. And uh, to be honest, I don't remember if there was all supported for the older TH. But this is the, uh, the, the basic sensor or default sensor, which is uh, temperature and humidity. You can get a different sensor, which is only temperature and it comes in a waterproof um, case. So if you want to measure water temperature, you can just put it into the water. And also a third sensor is available, which uh, uh, measures soil um, moisture. So again, you can use it for irrigation or just make sure that your plants are watered. So if it drops below a certain value, then well, you can just use the TH Elite to turn on, let's say, a pump, which is going to do the irrigation. So these are the reasons why you would choose a TH Elite over the original TH. And of course, the screen and different look and feel. If you are interested in any of these two products, you are going to find uh, purchasing links in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.